Hey guys, John from flyatmikealpha.com and today we're going to go through how to apply for a remote operating pilot certificate. So if you're already a pilot or if you took a knowledge written exam, this process will apply to you. First we're going to go to iacra.fa.gov. So we're going to find the IACRA website and on the IACRA website there'll be a place where you can register. Now, if you're already a pilot, you already have an IACRA login because you've already gone through this website to apply for your original pilot certificate. Now, if you're new to IACRA, if you just took a written exam, instead of actually getting a whole pilot certificate to operate your drone commercially, then you'll have to go to register. Now, if you're already a pilot, you can skip register and skip ahead to the next step here. But so we're going to register, and we're registering as an applicant, assuming that you have your knowledge written exam completed already. Then you'll agree to the terms of service and continue. And your airman certificate number will be blank as long as, as long with your date of issuance because you don't have one. Your first name you'll enter in there. Social security number you can choose not to use. And use your birth date instead. Now something that confuses people here, your residential address, map or directions to physical residential address, that can be left blank. You don't need that. That's for people that live in rural Alaska and need to actually provide a map to their address. Just your regular street address, city, state, zip, regular old stuff there. Choose a few security questions as you normally would. So you can choose a username of anything you want. The tough part is going to be choosing a password. So your password has to be between 8 and 12 characters and it needs to have at least uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. So something along the lines of, oh, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uppercase A, lowercase B, exclamation point, would be sufficient. So now we've registered with IACRA and we have an FTN number and we have our username. Let's write both of these things down so you don't forget them and hopefully you can remember your password. Next thing you're wanting to do is log in here to IACRA. The reason for writing down the FTN is you're going to have to bring that to a flight instructor or a DPE to actually get your certificate issued. So now we can go ahead and log in. and we will accept terms of service as an applicant. And now here is the part that you would join up with us if you were already a pilot. You would log in, accept the terms of service as an applicant, start a new application. You'd already see the applications probably from your private pilot certificate in there, and you would choose to be a pilot, and the certification you're applying for is a remote pilot. So small unmanned aircraft system. You're going to start application. And now it's imported all your data from before, so you shouldn't have to fill out any of this sort of stuff here. As long as it's all correct, you'll hit save and continue. It may be different if you're already a pilot and you've moved, you may have to update that information in there. English provision, hopefully you are, so you can check yes. And then hopefully you've never been convicted for any sort of drug uh, offenses, so you can hit no. And then you'll be able to hit save and continue. Now the basis of issuance will depend, either a completion of knowledge test A or a completion of training course. If you're already a pilot, this should be highlighted automatically for you. If you're not automatically or not already a pilot, this top one should be highlighted for you where you just have to complete the knowledge test. You'll have to provide a form of identification and enter your USA driver's license number along with the expiration date and the state. Enter the knowledge test exam ID from that paper. It's that big long number up in the top right hand corner generally. And then once you have all this filled out and you've typed in your knowledge exam ID, hit search and associated that test with this application, then you'll be able to hit save and continue. And at the very end here, it's going to ask you, have you ever been denied for remote pilot certificate for any reason? Hopefully the answer is no. And then you'll be able to view the pilot's bill of rights. After you've viewed the pilot's bill of rights, which apply to you as a remote operating pilot as well, you'll hit close. Then you'll be allowed to hit View Privacy Act. Once you've viewed the Privacy Act and you're satisfied with it, then you'll hit Close, and then you can review your application. Now there'll also be another button here to actually submit application once you actually enter a knowledge test that I never took and enter the airman identification number that doesn't apply in this case. So these two things have to be resolved here back on the basis of issuance side here. 
but that's no problem. That's just your driver's license number and your knowledge test ID. And then at the very end here, you'll be able to hit submit application. It'll say application submitted. You'll take that FTN number to a CFI, just look up a local flight school in the area, walk in there, and for probably just a few dollars, you can pay a CFI to log into IACRA, approve your application for you, and then you will be a small UAS pilot. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video, and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below, and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at We'll see you all next time.